Hello and welcome to All Well and Good, episode 16. I'm joined today by Benji Buckles, who is one of the co-founders of the alt-libertarian movement. We are here today to talk about um, his experience at Unite the Right and a little bit about the SJW infiltration of the Libertarian Party and movement. Thanks for joining me today, Benji. Um, could you possibly go through a few things that you saw at Unite the Right at Charlottesville this weekend? Yeah, so um, the, the first thing was as soon as I uh, arrived in town, which was uh, right as the event was supposed to be held at noon, um, the entire town felt, uh, th th there was a feeling about the town. It, uh, it, it was weird. Um, it, it felt like a war zone almost. Um, so as soon as I got parked and, uh, and got out of the car, that's when the news started spreading that uh, a state of emergency had been declared. Um, the state of emergency was really declared before, uh, before anything started, uh, which led me and most everyone there to believe that uh, it had been planned beforehand to, uh, to cancel the event before it started. Um, but anyway, so as the uh, police started trying to uh, disperse our side, they, uh, well, they actually didn't have to try to disperse our side. They asked us to leave and we left peacefully. But um, as we were walking down the street in the process of leaving, um, the police didn't say anything to Antifa or uh, any of the other radical leftist groups that were there. They just let them do whatever they want which caused a lot of problems as, uh, as the Unite the Right people tried to uh, disperse. Um, so the main group was walking down the street trying to get out of the downtown area and being followed by uh, the different leftist groups that had collectivized. And uh, the police were pushing us basically into these people. Um, I, I really, I really blame, uh, the, the police, whether it was intentional or not, I, I would say it was probably unintentional on their part, but someone should have known better than to only tell one side that they had to leave and then to push them into the opposing side. That was, that was really incompetent on their part. Um, so once our side was pushed into their side, uh, that was the street corner where uh, where the car um, ran over those people, and uh, so the situation just devolved from there. Right. Um, it, I have heard from other people who were there, or from secondhand reports, that the police were pretty incompetent, which may have um, exacerbated the situation, leading to the uh, tragic death. Um, you took some photos, and it looked like that it looked like Antifa had a very strong gathering there. Is that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, there's no way that those people were uh, local, and they were they were pretty well organized. Um, I've I've heard rumors that they were bussed in, and uh, I, I find that to believe uh, I, I find that very believable. Why, in your opinion, do you think this has uh, escalated over the last few years? Um, w w could it be the, the rise of Trumpism? Could it be that uh, the SJWs, the radical leftists, have gained a lot of power in the media and uh, through corporations and academia, so they're really starting to double down on their anti-Western and anti-white rhetoric? Um, it, it, could it be anything else? I, I would say that uh, that all of that is is correct, but what I can't figure out is why um, why it seems to be at a uh, at a more volatile point now than per se a year ago. Um, I, I would have thought that uh, with um, with Trump winning the election and everything um, that that it would have subsided a little bit, but it's it's only heated up, and uh, I, I can't wrap my head around that either. Right, right. Um, moving on from Unite the Right, um, which is why we decided to have this conversation in the first place. Um, what inspired you to co-found the alt libertarian movement? Well, it started for me 
as a revision of the libertarian message. Um, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with the non-aggression principle or uh, or anything you know with libertarianism. I, I think that what they have wrong is the messaging. A uh, a perfect example of that is um, just uh, within the past couple of days, the uh, the Libertarian Party's national Facebook page um, posted an article about uh, marijuana uh, in North Korea and uh, said something to the effect of, uh, it's sad that we have to look towards North Korea uh, for freedom. And I mean, that's just astoundingly dumb. I, it, it's, it's such an ignorant thing to say that uh, I, I can't believe um, people who consider themselves a major political party in America uh, would, would be as ignorant as to say something like that. I know, I, I saw that. It was just completely ridiculous, the kind of things that they tried to push. Um, and then they seem to have sobered up and retracted that statement. But it, it sends out such a bad message when you're saying, well, um, North Korea is a freer place than the United States because apparently they grow weed, which um, I, I'm a bit dubious about that being true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like anybody who knows anything about the situation in North Korea the, the modern-day concentration camps, the I, I mean, it, anyone who has an IQ above 70 can, uh, can see how dumb that statement is. Let's talk about um, that feminist woman at the LP who, well, as you know, as the saying goes, SJWs always project. She tried to make an accusation that there had been a conservative infiltration of the Libertarian Party. Uh, how, how much uh, do you believe that's true? Oh, well, there was a uh, conservative infiltration at the very beginning because it's a uh, naturally conservative movement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, um, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Friedrich Hayek, uh, Murray Rothbard, um, Ludwig von Mises, uh, I, I mean, all these people in, in the terms that we use today would be considered uh, conservative. I, I know they considered themselves, you know, liberal, and they are classical liberals in the, uh, in the true sense of the term. But in the way that we use the terms liberal and conservative, they, they're very conservative. It seems that the, the LP, as, as we mentioned before, seem to care a bit more about legalization of marijuana so I get what they're trying to do in trying to capture young liberals and progressives who want to smoke weed without um, uh, threat of being arrested or jeopardizing their life but at the end of the day they seem to have attracted quite a few people you really wouldn't want to have your party associated with like um, I, I mean Gary Johnson's just a prime example uh, for example when he lost it at that interview about the illegal immigrants, and then at the LP party, you had that fat dude take his shirt off and start dancing. So, what Yeah, the Libertines. Think... Yeah. Would you like to go into a yeah. bit more depth about um, those people as a group within the LP? Yeah, um, so we, we commonly joke that they are a uh, cancer to the party, but um, I, I, I've actually come to believe that they are a terminal cancer to the party. I... Uh, I think that, um, and, and I'm not opposed to, uh, I understand that politics is groups getting together and agreeing on what they can agree on. It's coalition building. So, you know, I, I have no problem with saying, hey, SJWs, you want to legalize weed? We want to legalize weed. Let's work together to legalize weed. But... When you start allowing all these SJWs into the party, and then you allow them to take over the party in the way that they have, uh, the result is is what we get, where um, we actually have, a, you know, a, a large portion. I, I would, you know, anecdotally say half of the Libertarian Party is now um, espousing socialism and welfare and you know socialist ideas. Um, so, so I'm not I'm not opposed to uh, working together with people where we agree, but what I am opposed to is allowing these people to uh, take over the party 
Um, but however, I, I think at this point, um, it, it's too late. They've already taken, taken over the party. Um, the, it's impossible to take it back. I think it's a terminal cancer on the party. Yeah, and the other thing I've seen is a few so-called libertarians trying to push for universal basic income. Um, now, Murray Rothbard dishes out a devastating critique of the uh, universal basic income in his um, groundbreaking book, For a New Liberty. But I think what um, modern libertarianism, the, the big L libertarianism has devolved into, freedom from responsibility rather than freedom from coercion. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that seems to be the going thing with the libertines. Unfortunately, they seem to form quite, well, the, at least the vocal um, bulk of the libertarian party, at least the modern libertarian party. Yeah, they're, they are the bulk of the Libertarian Party, but I would want to point out that they are still a small minority of actual Libertarians. Most Libertarians have now given up hope on the Libertarian Party, and they're looking towards people like Rand Paul, Thomas Massey, Justin Amash, the Liberty Caucus, the Freedom Caucus. Uh, I, I think that that's the way forward for, uh, for real Libertarians who really believe in... Uh, and pushing for liberty in a uh, reasonable sense. There also seems to be a rift between the people who consider themselves libertarians but are more for secessionist movements. Uh, for example, Calexit, Texit, uh, Catalonia, the Basque Country. They're just just to name a few. So they tend to have a bit more of a nationalist streak. However, the other side of the Libertarian Party, which has become more dominant, has a more globalist streak to them. Uh, sort of, the, they're being very acquiescent to the notion of one world government, open borders, and maybe neoliberalism, sort of um, this weird merger between state and company, uh, for, you know, on a global scale. Yeah, one, uh, one word that I'm starting to uh, see used more often, and I really like the fact that it's starting to uh, become. Uh, you know, it, it's starting to be in people's vocabularies is uh, cosmopolitanism. Uh, I, I think that that really uh, pinpoints what we're talking about there. And it's the uh, it, it's the uh, the thing that connects the SJWs with the libertines and the other radical leftists. They're all cosmopolitans. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably agree with that statement. A lot of them, a lot of people who seem to form that uh, prominent bunch, you know, the sort of dyed head and peers tattooed um, druggies who unfortunately seem to be the face of the Libertarian Party at the moment, they all seem to come from at least middle class backgrounds. Yeah, I, you know, and I would say that postmodernism is to blame um, and the education system here in America. It's uh, the, the postmodernist, the postmodernist infiltration of our education system. Because, yeah, that, that also seems to be a very big point um, about the modern libertarians that they tend to be very, uh, they seem to espouse cultural and moral relativism. But it's usually as a way to maybe exculpate their poor life decisions. Yeah, I, I would say that that is uh, the biggest, the biggest uh, factor for the, uh, the alt libertarians or, the, you know, the, the biggest. Uh, the word's escaping me right now, but uh, well, that, that's the biggest difference uh, between alt-libertarians and, uh, and normie libertarians, per se, is, um, is we oppose vehemently uh, postmodernism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think these libertines and uh, SJWs, the, the leftists that are libertarians in name only, um, the, they're postmodernist uh, or of some sort. Uh, I did an interview at Unite the Right where uh, an interview an interviewer uh, said that uh, postmodernism was dead and that it died back in the 70s. And, and I laughed and I said, I don't see it that way. And he asked me how how uh, how did I see it? And I said, Well, when you see all these uh, radical leftist groups that are out here today, like Antifa and the radical LGBT peoples and Black Lives Matter, uh, they're all bastard children of postmodernism. 
That was the exact language that I used, and, and I think it's very apropos. They are the bastard children of a horrible father. And that's good. I think that uh, maybe carries a lot of weight because, uh, as I said before, a lot of the people who comprise the LP and form the kind of radical SJW left have had quite a lot of education. And in these sort of humanities departments, there's very little if any counter narrative to what they're being taught yeah it, it, it for the professors you look at someone like jordan peterson who i'm a really big fan of if uh, if you even dare question it uh they'll try to get you fired uh they'll try to ruin your life so uh the, if i was a high level professor you know you, you could understand why uh why they would be afraid to speak out Moving on, uh, what would you say that were the core tenets of alt libertarianism? What kind? How, how would you differentiate yourself from maybe traditional uh, libertarianism from the LP or right libertarianism? Well, that's uh, that's what I was trying to get out there uh, get out there a second ago. The the main difference is uh, is opposition to postmodernism. Um, I. I would not consider. I was actually uh, I was talking to Nick, the the original founder of alt libertarianism. Um, I was talking to him about this earlier. We're going to start working on a platform uh, to make this a political ideology. Uh, as of right now, I would look at it as a revision to the libertarian message. So would it kind of have elements of paleo-libertarianism and uh, maybe Hoppian anarcho-capitalism to it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't confine it just to uh, Hoppian and Cap uh, philosophy because uh, I, I believe that uh, minarchist uh, and, and just classical liberal small government people uh, can be an alt-libertarian. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, I was, I was thinking a lot there and I forgot your question. Could you re-ask it? I was just saying, would there be more elements of, say, paleo-libertarianism and Hoppian oh. anarcho-capitalism, sort of like libertarianism, free markets, uh, strong private property, rule of law, if possible, privatized court system, and maybe uh, cultural and ethnic homogeneity and social conservatism in some aspects? Yes, um, alt libertarian alt libertarianism is a lot easier to say than uh, neo paleo libertarianism, but uh, both would be accurate. Right. And 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 also, and also paleo conservatives, uh, a paleo conservative can be an alt libertarian. Um, it, it's just a revision on the libertarian message. Right now, the libertarian message uh, is described as dude weed. LOL. You know, it, it, it's just, um, it, it's childish, really. Um, so, so we're just offering a more mature message. Where would the alt libertarian stand on the whole nationalism versus globalism and potentially versus secessionism? Uh, so strongly, strongly uh, nationalism over globalism. As far as secession, that's a, that's a more nuanced discussion. Um, personally, you know, I, I, on the topic of secession, I, uh, I prefer uh, secession of rural areas and suburban areas from urban areas. Um, but but I'm, from, I'm from the South, and uh, I often joke that uh, we tried secession here once before and it didn't work out so well. Um, so, so I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I'm, I'm not one to, uh, partake in utopian thinking or, you know, uh, pointless fantasies. And, uh, and when I, when I see a lot of people talking about, uh, you know, California secession or Texas or something like that, uh, to me, it just seems like a lot of wishful thinking. And, and I think that, uh, the libertarian movement, would be uh, a lot better served by being more reasonable and just advocating for smaller government. Uh, again, you know, people like Rand Paul, 
uh, Justin Amash, Thomas Massey. These, these people are uh, great examples of how we should be fighting this battle right now. It's, it's one step at a time. It's one issue at a time. It's small incremental steps, but that's the only way. How would you go about maybe addressing the neocons on the East Coast and uh, endless uh, U.S. interventions abroad? Well, uh, you know, again, I think that uh, that those guys that I just mentioned and, and others in the Liberty Caucus and Freedom Caucus, I, I do think that they're doing a good job um, opposing the... Uh, the military interventionism, especially, that's, uh, that's one thing that I'm very against and all libertarians are very against is interventionism. Um, but th they just need, uh, they need more people like them in the Senate and in the House. And uh, they need more uh, exposure because the mainstream media, it's never been more clear that the mainstream media is against us. It, they're against liberty, they're against conservatism, they're against the West. Uh, the only thing that they're for is the establishment, the globalist, uh, cosmopolitans, whatever you want to call them. That's what they're for. That, that's the side that they're on. And that includes Fox as much as CNN or the rest of them. I think another big challenge, especially for the libertarian and maybe smaller government pro-private property cause, is to draw attention to our government deficits and national debts. Um, California often boasts about saying, well, if, if we were our own separate country, we'd have one of the highest GDPs in the world. Yes, that may be frankly true, but GDP also includes government spending and California's complete fiscal drain. Um, it seems that liberals and progressives aren't the least bit concerned about America having a 20, 20 million Sorry, trillion. twenty trillion dollar national debt, and another hundred. It, 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 it's so big; it's it's even hard to uh, comprehend. <laughs> yeah, um, but how do you get that through to people who are just so willfully blind? You know, a, a lot of people just don't care. They they have their own lives. They have their own stuff going on. They have you know kids, friends, jobs, whatever. And uh, they just don't care. So not only do you have to bring the problem to them, but you have to bring the solution to them. And uh, and we just we have to we have to do a better job in our marketing and our messaging. And uh, and that starts at being a cohesive group, which is why I like the idea of unite the right. We do need to unite the right. We do need to get together and have a solid message and, and not just be people complaining about problems. We need to be bringing these people solutions because the, the average person just, they don't care enough to look into the problem and figure it out and understand it and come up with their own solutions. They can't be bothered by that. They, they have their own lives to live. What would you say to somebody who may, might make the suggestion that something like Unite the Right could easily be made to look bad, as it as it did? I mean, the tiki torches were bad optics, and then of course you had people who are more on the fringe um, with swastikas. Uh, a lot of people will declaim that a lot louder and a lot harsher than people carrying Soviet flags, but that's you know a product of uh, engineering from universities. Yeah. But something like that, counter protested by Antifa groups, how would you maybe get the message out without it being associated with violence? Well, so, you know, the main reason why I went to the Unite the Right rally was to represent libertarians, represent alt libertarians, represent normal, you know, reasonable conservatives, and to, to show everyone. That, uh, that these neo-Nazi, skinhead, white supremacists uh, are not the majority of this movement. They're a small minority of this movement, um, infinitesimal. Uh, but the media will run past a group of hundreds of reasonable conservatives to talk to the one shirtless guy with a swastika tattoo, and, and they're doing that on purpose. They want to make everyone right of Mao look like Hitler. 
yeah, the, the media tend to be very selective about who they interview and who they film. Um, I mean, if you remember back a few months ago, CNN tried to stage a, a Muslim protest and they got caught doing it and a few tweets went viral uh, showing them trying to stage this protest. Um, it seems that the media also have it in for maybe more traditional right libertarians. Maybe that's another reason why the LP has so willfully tried to rebrand itself as more quote unquote progressive. Uh, would you say that would be a fair thing to say? Uh, would it be fair to say that? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Could you re-ask the question? Yeah, that. Um, Maybe the I, I know that the Libertarian Party has been co-opted by people on the radical left, but another reason why they might have been moving leftwards so quickly was to appear more palatable for the media. Because obviously it is oh, the yeah. media who will say that, oh, look at these people, that they're, they're Nazis, they're, they're conspiracy theorists, they want to um, make the government really small, they hate the poor, uh, they, they don't want people to have health care and things like that. Hello? Right, it seems like we've lost Benji. Um, have you guys got any questions in the comments? Any questions while we try to get him back? Um, Hop, thoughts on Hopper? I pretty much agree with everything the man has to say. Um, he is the logical conclusion to Rothbardian libertarianism. Um, he's, he has put forward some very uh, useful tools to philosophy, economics, and the ethics of private property. Um, or are you referring to something that he might have written in uh, Democracy the God that Failed, Matteo Patio? Any other questions? What is the future of Venezuela to you? Well, it's going to end one of two ways. It's either going to descend into a sort of Cuban form of dictatorship or Maduro is going to get removed in a coup d'etat. I can't see it going any other way, to be honest. Um, am I a minarchist or an ANCAP? Philosophically, I'm an ANCAP, but I would work towards any shrinking of the state. Uh, but uh, I don't know how much you can do by democratic means. It's usually some horrible event that leads to uh, resurgence in liberty. Um, I mean, looking at how the national debts are piling on, looking at how many unfunded liabilities Western countries have, looking at how Western countries are fanatically importing third world welfare consumers, it's a completely unsustainable system. I think that they're trying to usher in a police state. Um, they've downtrodden on the spirit of liberty for long enough in Western countries, in particular places like the UK and France, even though France didn't really have much of a spirit of liberty, uh, of right liberty. Uh, maybe when that all collapses, which it has to, because you can't keep printing money forever, then we might be able to do something about it. But um, historically speaking, liberty can only really work in places which have a bit more cultural homogeneity than the West does at the moment. So I don't know if people will maybe return to their own countries, but a lot of people who are in the West are there because of welfare. 
unfortunately. Um, I don't understand why people would risk life and limb to go to a country where they may struggle to compete to find lower tier jobs when they can just live, live off welfare and earn uh, significantly more than the average wage a year in a month. Um, yeah, I agree with all cap rights. Uh, abolishing the state is, is complete suicide. Um, get, get, due to credit expansion, there's a lot of malinvestment as it is at the moment. The subsidizing companies that would fail under natural market conditions is also um, going to lead to huge problems when and if you were to everyone do central banks because interest rates would have to refine their market rate, which would be significantly different as they are now. So a lot of people would go out of, would uh, be jobless effectively. And then there are a lot of people, uh, this is quite a strange thing to say, but without fiat currency, I believe that a lot of people wouldn't have been born under current conditions and that middle class is having to pay progressive taxation and suffer through inflation without uh, owning that many hard assets. So if you see your uh, real wages drop you can't afford to have as many kids as you could do under a uh, stable economy or under a hard currency economy. Uh, any other questions? Right, it seems like Benji's going to try to reconnect his phone overheated. Thoughts on crypto? Cryptocurrency. Um, it's not the be all and end all of currency. It is. I had this discussion with my friend last night. The good thing about it, it's decentralized and almost impossible to hack. And it's also limited, which is the important thing, and it's a way to ensure a currency retains its value. But um, a Visa V fiat currency, it's only going to appreciate in value up to a certain stage where people think, well, it's too expensive to trade in Bitcoin, so we're going to just trade our Bitcoin for fiat currency because the government can artificially devalue their currency um, against Bitcoin. So it's going to be in flux like that until one or the other um, you can't really have Gresham's law because Bitcoin isn't artificially overvalued, but uh, currencies, the fiat currencies, are undervalued. So there's always going to be this uh, flux in supply and demand for Bitcoin against fiat currency. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good to be back. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties there. No problem. I've been answering questions on on the uh, chat. Uh, so, when do you think there seem to be the split between the left and the right libertarians? Um, to be honest, I, I wasn't in the uh, the libertarian party until uh, last year, so I, I, I wasn't there for uh, I wasn't there for the beginning of the SJW infiltration. Um, I, I've just been here for. Uh, for the end of it, but uh, for, from what I gather, it, it appears that uh, after after Ron Paul's uh, stint, when uh, the Gary Johnson takeover happened, uh, that's when uh, Sarwark and uh, the, these you know leftists that are uh, in control of the LP now uh, really just went all out, uh, you know, SJW uh, pandering. I uh, think John McAfee's quote saying that there are far too many white males in the LP is really when, you know, it, it kind of killed a lot of people's interest in the movement. Because let's be frank, I think a lot of people joined the LP to kind of escape from the identity politics from the left. And then they kind of joined the LP because they found, they maybe found Trump a bit uncouth, but that really drove people away. W would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I, I was really upset with that statement by myself. I actually uh, supported John McAfee over um, Austin Peterson and Gary Johnson in the Libertarian primary. Uh, and, and then, you know, when, when I heard him say that, it, uh, it really sounded like a sore loser statement to me. Um, I, I still like John McAfee. I, I, I 
I just think it was uh, it, it was a poor choice of words. And 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 I will agree that uh, libertarianism does need to uh, you know reach out towards women and minorities and you know uh, other groups more. They are underrepresented. Um, you know, I know a lot of people would say, well, um, you know, the ideas of libertarianism don't appeal to these groups in the same way that it appeals to, you know, white men or affluent white men or whatever. Um, I, I disagree. I think that libertarianism has uh, plenty to offer everyone. Uh, and, and we don't have to pander to these people and let them, you know, take over and co-op the movement and, you know, change uh, libertarian principles. Uh, but we can work together with people and, and show them, you know, how libertarianism can benefit them. But uh, to say, you know, shame on you and stuff like that, that that's, uh, that's a poor choice of words, to put it uh, nicely. I also think that a lot of, there's been also a split between the ANCAPs and the Hoppian ANCAPs over the issue of borders, because statistically, a lot of people coming in from Latin America and Africa and uh, Asia, will always vote for Democrats in a, in, a, in a larger portion than they would for Republicans. So they'd normally go for larger government over smaller government. And I think that a lot of ANCAPs don't want to address the fact that as soon as they become American, they're not going to be freedom-loving. Or as soon as they become European, they're not going to be freedom-loving. The chances are that they're going to vote for a party that panders to their interests and maybe offers free stuff over the party that... that um, well, unfortunately, I don't think the Republican Party is very principled at all. Um, so it's really just obstructionism to the Democrats rather than any small government, free market, private property, self-ownership principles. Yeah, I um, I, I read a, a wonderful article. It was uh, I was trying to remember who wrote it. It was uh, Robert Higgs, who's also, uh, I, I would consider, a left libertarian. But uh, Robert Higgs wrote a, a great piece a while back about the origins of neocons, and he really lays it out uh, well from a historical sense um, that uh, neocons are, are not different from neo-progressives in any, in any sense. Uh, they just were smart enough to uh, realize that they could jump ship to uh, the conservative you know, movement or Republican Party and take over, uh, which is exactly what they did. There's also a great book by Murray Rothbard called The Betrayal of the American Right, where he goes into this in, in quite, um, quite uh, well, voluminous detail. Uh, he talks about the sort of the uh, Isabel Patterson, the Albert J. Knopp types, the Garrett Garrett, uh, Frank Chodorov, um, H.L. Mencken, all these people who were basically anti-New Dealers being replaced by the Buckleyites and the National Review. Um, but most of these people tended to be from the Trotskyist and Menshevik left, um, almost jettisoned from the Democratic Party for being too extreme. So, I'm, you know, the neocon invasion of the Republican Party is a huge problem, and especially today, because according to a lot of people on the left, you're a Nazi or you're alt right or you're fascist if you don't espouse these sort of boomer, conservative, or neocon ideals. Yeah, you, you know, before I was a uh, libertarian, actually, you know, I, I was raised, I was raised a uh, blue dog Democrat, you know, as a child, my mother and my stepfather uh, were blue dog Democrats, and then in my teenage years, that uh, blue dog Democrat turned into uh, a Trotskyite, and um, and I actually voted for uh, Obama, the first time I ever voted, I voted for Obama, and um Obama and uh, Clinton's policies with Libya in regards to Gaddafi is actually what red-pilled me and uh, brought me to the right side. Um, but, but before I was a libertarian, I was a uh, Trotskyist, Trotskyite, and uh, the, the people, you know, e even more so, I would say, than the neocons, the, uh, the libertarian left reminds me of... Uh, Trotskyist and Trotskyites uh, way more than they know, and um, it, it's actually astonishing to me how uh, how similar they are, and 
they're completely unaware. Yeah, that, that's very interesting how I, I bash this point quite a lot about maybe the, the cultishness of progressives that they were all screaming and whining about George Bush's foreign policy, and rightly so. But the second that Barack Obama continued these policies and intensified them, adding or well, doubling the national debt in the process, they, they were nowhere to be seen. And now that Trump maybe has continued some of these bombings abroad, they're back in full force saying, oh, look at Trump bombing these countries. He, he's anti-Muslim and yada, yada, yada. But it's just the height of hypocrisy. The, the, the form of Alinskyite tactics where you hold your political enemy to their values, but have none yourself, so you can't really get pinned down. Yeah, um, so that's one thing. Um, when, when I first uh, started the alt libertarian movement, uh, and and I'll you know caveat that by saying that uh, Nick started it first, uh, but it was an original idea of mine. And then when I started it, we. Uh, um, but when when I started this, um, I, I realized that the postmodern tactics, the Alinskyite tactics, uh, the the tactics that the leftists use, they are effective tactics. And so what I wanted to do was uh, use their tactics for liberty, use their tactics for us. And uh, so, you know, the, the prime example of that is memes. Uh, you know, people who just don't get it yet, uh, they, uh, they just see the memes as, you know, uh, trolls online just uh, playing around, telling jokes, having fun or whatever. But, uh, but memes are actually, actually uh, a lot more powerful than that, a lot deeper than that. Um, what the postmodernists do, what the leftists do, they uh, they try to shame anyone who doesn't think like them into either thinking like them or just silence. You know, uh, they, they just try to shame people out of their position. And uh, is a, a conservative will try to win over a leftist by reason. And, and you just can't reason with unreasonable people. So what you have to do is you have to ostracize them. You have to shame them. And, and so that's what the meme is. It's turning arguments into memes and then using those memes as shaming tactics for our enemies. Yeah, that may be one thing you could do to gain maybe a bit of political traction against the postmodern left because they'll always try to frame it in the oppressor oppressed paradigm so it, it only really serves to atomize society to its most individual level eventually there'll be one person who says well yeah i'm i'm muslim black uh a lesbian uh, demigender disabled uh, other kin so I'm the most oppressed person, and therefore I'm the most virtuous. Give me more resources, which uh, it seems that's the way what it will boil down to. But when you break society up to such a degree, then the, there are no core values, there are no core ideals keeping society together, and therefore these social engineers can arrogate to themselves more power because people aren't fighting for anything. Views and they're nihilistic. Well, well, they're fighting for themselves, you know, uh, and uh, it, it, it's that, that's that's the problem with collectivism is, uh, you know, when you say, hey, we're all in this together. Uh, so your group needs to give my group something or you need to give me something. People are going to fight for their uh, for their own interest. But, uh, you know, it, it goes bad when you say you have to give me something out of my interest. Right. That's, uh, that's very right. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there, but do you have any parting words? And um, could you please tell the audience where they can find you and maybe find some, something to do with the alt-libertarian movement? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Facebook. Uh, the alt libertarian movement. It's a group. It's a closed group. So you'll have to uh, you'll have to request to be a member. 
Uh, the reason why we can't be a public group is because the radical leftist, if uh, you know, if we were posting our uh, our thoughts, you know, in a public forum, they would uh, they would use them to try to uh, cost us our jobs and you know our livelihoods and stuff because uh, that's how they are. But uh, yeah, anybody who's interested, uh, Facebook Benji Buckles B E N J I B U C K L E S or uh, the Alt Libertarian Movement Facebook group. 